Hi guys, wet weather outside, so we'll have a look at doing one of these electronic kits that I've bought. This one I picked up in a charity shop. Make your own speaker. Okay, basically we assemble that. That speaker you attach to things like balloons, the window, anything that can vibrate and that acts as a soundboard, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah, they show it attached to a balloon. Tells you what all the different bits are. And when I looked at it, when we got it from the charity shop, I could see somebody had obviously thought about doing it, but never actually got as far as soldering it up. We put a couple of bits through. And that was it. And the usual way of doing these is to do the, the lowest items first, the ones that are closest to the board, and then work your way up from there. Well, those two diodes are in the right place, so they're all right. We could solder them in. And then the resistors, 1.2K, 1.2K, 1 ohm, 4.7 ohms, 220 ohms, 1 ohm. We could check these with a meter to make sure we get the right values, or you could work them out from looking at the colours. A little bit of a jump in continuity here. I was using my meter to measure these resistors to check, and either my meter is wrong or these resistors are way out. I think it might be my meter. Yeah. <laughs> Got 1.5 ohms just in the leads. So that was a bad start using my meter to measure things. So what I'm doing now is just going by color. So that's brown, red, red, brown being a one, red being a two. So that's one, two, and then two zeros after it, 1.2K. And those ones, brown, black, gold, which as I say should be brown is a one, black is a zero. So that's the one ohm ones. Uh, red, red, brown is two, two, zero. So that's 220 ohms, which is that one. One ohm, two, 220 ohms. 1 ohm, and then that one there, yellow, violet, gold, should be 4.7 ohms. So we won't use my meter for measuring because that was actually totally confusing me because it's I wasn't take, taking into account the resistance of the actual leads. 1 ohm there, 1 ohm there. They haven't actually given us very much space to fold these over. I've got to fold them 
right over as close as I can to the resistor itself. I'll do them so they're the same way round, so we can read them easily if we need to. That's the 4.7 goes up there. Twenty. Oh, other way round. Just for people who like them to all look the right way round. Yeah, they. Not giving us much space to get these in. I have to do that's not quite neat. Right, I'll solder them. Trim them off. Well, I moved the camera, and I a bit close to the bottom of the screen. And they're a bit better. Right, that's our resistors in place. That's showing a little indentation at the top. So number one should be at the top. That's got a little dot on it. Can you see that? Little dot just there, which would be number one. So we'll put that That way up. 
Uh, what else have we got that's low down? Where's that one going to go? That's going to go up there. That's quite a tall one. Come on. Micro switch is quite low. Yeah, that could go on there. Header going there. I don't know if you can actually hear how it's raining outside. It's pretty persistent. LEDs, they've actually shown you the long leg and the short leg, so you can get it the right way around. The long leg is the positive. You want them to go in there and then bend over from the looks of it.
Oh gosh. That's the one that fits on there. We'll do that one last. <laughs> That's the speaker. Yeah. Okay, I think some of these can go in. Those have got to be for those ones. Now these electrolytic capacitors have got a grey bar indicating the negative side. They've also got the longer leg is the positive. That's the hundred. One's a hundred. It's actually getting dark in here. It's not even four o'clock yet.
All right, these are 470, yep. Yeah. Just in case what I, you missed what I said earlier, gray is negative, long leg is the positive, and we've got plus and minus shown on the screen there. Screen, screen print, silk print, what do they call it? It's written on the board. I've got to say, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> All right, how are we doing? Nearly there. That one's a bit lower.
Okay. Probably won't actually be using that. And go through like that. Uh, should I put that on first? I missed that. Hmm. Yeah, I probably should have put that on the back of there. To support it. I can probably still get one piece on there.
Yeah, I missed that. Well, that's it. Uh, oh no, it isn't. We've got to solder that on. No, we don't. Clips onto there. But it does solder onto here. It doesn't tell us which way round to do it.
and obviously we need something we can plug that into to play some music. I'll go and see if I've got a phone with some music on it that's got the right socket. Big jump in continuity here. Um, I will demonstrate it's working first. It's raining hard outside, so it might get too noisy. Turn the sound up. Turn it back down again. That's working off that phone. Um, yeah, it wasn't working when I'd finished soldering it all together. I plugged that lead into my Who Are We mobile phone, which I bought cheap uh, the other day. And it turns out that the microphone socket didn't work. Um, I wasn't sure that it was a microphone socket, so I got another phone to check. And it still wasn't working. So I then went and checked that lead on a separate pair of headphones. And the lead is OK. So I then started doubting my soldering. So I loosened the um, connections on there so that I could actually lever the battery pack out of the way and double check all my soldering, which was all OK. I then started to doubt whether I'd put the opto coupler in the right way up. Um, so I went and checked, Googled it to make sure I'd got it the right way around. And yes, I got it the right way around. Still nothing working. I then was looking at the capacitors, and you may notice that one looks particularly um, out of place there, because I noticed that was 22 microfarads and that was 2.2 microfarads, that one there, and they both looked identical. And I wondered whether I'd put them in the wrong way round. So I desoldered that one so I could actually look at the numbers on it because you couldn't see them. And I'd got them right. So that was all right. So I was at a loss. Oh, I, I tried a different microphone, a, a speaker as well. I could not think what was wrong. And then I just happened to think, I wonder what the battery was like because I was using my rechargeable battery that's down there. And because the LED came on, I'd assumed everything was OK. But when I measured it, instead of being 9 volts, it was about 3.2 volts. It was, well, it was flat. So I put an ordinary 9 volt battery in there, and everything works. But I was really tearing my hair out and using lots of words that I wouldn't repeat on YouTube. I just could not understand why it wasn't working. And that was it. It was a flat battery. There was all sorts of other things went wrong. The headphones I tried to test that cord on had a flat battery on them, so they didn't work. So I'd use different headphones. As I say, the Who Are We, the microphone socket, headphone socket didn't work. Um, yeah, but it works. It does work. It works absolutely fine. This thing here, they call it an exciter rather than a speaker because it vibrates. And what you do is you put it on something that will vibrate in sympathy with it. I mean, they actually give you a balloon to blow up. So it's the, the balloon that vibrates. I've just got it on that metal tray, which, as you can tell, works absolutely fine. So long video. I will edit some of it out. But, uh, yeah, it got really frustrating at the end there. I might have to resolder that to fold it down flat again. But, yeah, that was very frustrating. There 
you can see no noise at all from there put it on a soundboard So it works. My soldering was fine. I had all the pieces in the right place. I just chose a flat battery. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment so I know I'm doing.